Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now today guys, I'm going to be potting up the absolutely incredible succulent plant gifts that um, our very beautiful friend Nelly, um, who lives in Sweden and has an amazing YouTube channel here called um, Collection of Unseen Nature. She sent us the most incredible euphorbias guys and also an amazing Stapelia cristata Oh my gosh, they're the most beautiful plants I've ever seen and they're very rare, they're hard to find. So me and Hans are incredibly, incredibly happy to show you there. Now, if you haven't seen the video of us unboxing Nelly's incredible gifts, then the link's up above to that video. Please do watch that uh, video, very exciting. And also, if you're not familiar with Nelly, um, then where have you been? <laughs> Nelly has an incredible YouTube channel where she shares not only some amazing, beautiful plants, but she has some gorgeous, very exotic pets um, of the sort of creepy crawly kind <laughs> but they're very beautiful do go over and check um, check out Nelly's channel it's very very interesting and she has some really beautiful exotic pets on there and hairy spiders and reptiles and everything so do go over guys and subscribe and also Nelly sort of likes things that are nice and unusual which is why she sent these really really beautiful plants here absolutely in complete shock because we did not know that we were getting anything at all so when the postman turned up with these we we're like what what's this and we opened it up it's like wow um i'm just gonna go over it very briefly these two are euphorbias euphorbia lactea and they're both the variegated form um, of the lactea as you see this is possibly more the all green version it has more of a bit of a variegation going through the middle of it there so it's not completely the all green and this one here is completely variegated i mean look at that isn't that gorgeous guys isn't that just so beautiful with the dark green and the, the lovely creamy white oh it's stunning and nelly took very kindly took cuttings from her plants and um, put a bit of the uh, cinnamon powder on which is great for helping to callus over the uh, the open wound because euphorbias have a milky white sap that um can sometimes bleed and bleed this white sap for quite a while and it can be a little bit irritating to the skin so this is good and as you see it's completely calloused over which is always important when you're rooting up cuttings you have to allow the cut end to completely callous over as i say this was over a week ago um now when um nelly sent these so that's completely calloused over and we're treating these as completely as complete cuttings as well and these two are rooted plants already this is a stapelia cristata monstrata isn't it beautiful i've never seen a um a cry straight of a stapelia only in um, magazines and obviously online i've never actually seen one of these for real so i cannot tell you how grateful we are nelly it's just so beautiful these plants are very rare and this one here is a stapelia uh, is sorry a euphorbia mammillaris and it's one of the variegated form this is commonly called the corn cob um wrongly called i should say the corn cob cactus because it's not a cactus it, it's completely just a succulent it's euphorbia which is not a cactus but it's nicknamed um the corn cob cactus but it's actually 100 percent um only succulent and uh, this is beautiful now we have a couple of the corn cob um cacti we have a normal corn cob on the dark green we have a couple of the variegated ones but this one is different again this is more like the rounded balls instead of the long arms coming out so it's very unusual again all these are all plants we haven't got so it's very exciting thank you nelly anyway now it's time to pot up and i want to share the potting up with you guys now first of all, we're going to pot up the cuttings and um, I've made up my own soil mix and what I like to use is a loam based soil. Um, I use a John Innes base which is loam and a bit of sand but I always add extra horticultural sand as well to the mix to make it extra um, extra drainage and I also use a bit of perlite if I don't use perlite then I'll use grit but in this case I'm using perlite so that's just to give you extra aeration because if you pot succulents up especially cuttings in normal sort of houseplant soil that just holds a lot of water and damp it can easily rot so it's, for drainage I just like to use extra perlite and extra extra sand that is my choice but I think it works and then what I could be doing here as I say Nelly's already put cinnamon powder on and it's rooted so we're going to be putting it up what you want to do is roots will co come from not only around the, the vascular core in the middle also from the edges here where these where the little spines come out of here the thorns i should say with euphorbia roots will also come around here 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 as well as around the edges so you want to make sure it's at least up to there to cover there but not too deep you don't want to encourage it to rot so i'm going to put a bit more a bit more of the the soil here and then when it comes to cuttings we're going to be keeping these dry 
um, because it is it is coming up to the well it's still early fall as such but it is coming up obviously now closer to the darker the darker nights and the colder weather so euphorbias are actually sort of um, early fall and even sometimes into the winter growers some of our uh, euphorbias funny enough go dormant completely during the winter months and some carry on growing this is because um, a lot of succulents will still be winter growers especially the ones from south africa um, which is the case with a lot of euphorbias but um, with this it's obviously these haven't got roots so if i was to water this now they, they'd inevitably rot we're going to be keeping it in a very um, sunny south facing window our kitchen window is full of all our um, euphorbias and it will get plenty of sunshine there I was thinking of putting it under the lights Nelly mentioned about under the lights but our grow lights are very they do give off quite a lot of heat and I'm worried they might dry out a little bit too much a bit too bright actually um, but I think the sunny window in the kitchen will be lovely um, especially now we get the nice sunny bright um, autumn days which we've been getting lately which is wonderful so that's just going to be potted in there gently pot it in there and what we will do is we're going to keep it like that for a while and then probably in a week or two just gently mist it with a bit of um, clean rainwater. The misting is just enough to stop the cutting from getting too dehydrated and also to encourage it to send out roots. But a, a cutting, a euphorbia one, same as any type of succulent or cactus cutting, well, depends on the type of succulent cutting. But in general, with these um, the euphorbia lacatia, it will send out roots even if it's kept totally dry. So you don't have to mist it with water. But it's just something I'm going to be doing with this one here. A little label here, euphorbia lacatia, very garter. So thank you, Nelly. That's the first one potted up. Very beautiful. And uh, that's going to go in the window. Now this one is, oh, in you're so in love with this, I have to say. Nelly, I think this is the one that was actually on. We watched Nelly's video when she had these plants delivered. I was like, oh gosh, I want one of them. And um, I actually saw this was, I think this is the same one, Nelly, on your plant. This one is the arm coming out on the right hand side. And I think you took a cutting from that part. That's, a, that's actually part I actually loved. Talk about the law of attraction. I was thinking, I want one of them. And you must have been reading, reading our minds, Nelly. <laughs> and uh, there you go, same soil again, but a little bit more, a bit more in here. It's good that the soil is also sort of soft i always sort of break any any bits also sieve any soil for a little sieve if you've got too many hard rocks and lumps you don't really want that with cutting so much so there you go and then again the same thing there roots is going to come out around the base and the bottom and also on here so just literally it's really important you don't put a cutting on too deep because that can encourage rot although if it's being kept mostly mainly dry it shouldn't really rot at all even if it's in the middle of winter but as i say it will send out roots a succulent cutting such as these type of euphorbias and especially with cactus cuttings as well they will send out roots even in dry soil now it's different if you're rooting things like christmas cactus you know slumbergia um, ripsalidopsis which is the easter cactus they do need to be kept moist um, all times but these type of um, cacti and succulents they do like to be kept arid and they will search for water even if dry so just a little bit of light misting with rain water it's all I'm going to be doing with these guys so um, isn't that isn't it just incredible I mean look at that isn't it so beautiful I'm so in love with this I have to say and Nelly they're going, they're going to be really well looked after and um, stay tuned for updates on these guys we will know when they do root we're not expecting anything now because as I say it is it is autumn now fall here so growth does slow down but with euphorbias they do carry on but are euphorbias and we do still carry on growing a bit throughout the the winter months um even though we keep them mostly dry but everything does slow down at this time of year so we're not expecting it to take root possibly till next spring but you'll know when it does take root with a cutting because you'll see new growth at the top don't get the habit of lifting it out of the pot every every now and then to check if it's got roots because that's going to disturb the plant it's important just pot it up leave it give it a light misting maybe a couple of times a week if, if needed in a warm place don't don't put it into a cold place especially with euphorbias i need a minimum of 10 degrees celsius which is about um, 50 degrees fahrenheit uh, because they're not cold hardy in any form and this is going to be kept probably in a, a warm kitchen window still warmer than average because we don't want to overwinter this we want to encourage it to send out roots so that's the difference and um here you go now for the oh, Gonna do this now. This is the Stapelio. Now this is the one that Nelly very kindly gifted to Hans. Now Hans doesn't know I'm actually potting this up. He's he's sleeping this morning. <laughs> it's very early in the morning. It's, it's probably hear all the birds. But um, I'm doing this now because it's a beautiful, very mild morning. And 
I think he'd be potting up the same way as I would be doing. So um, I think it'd be a nice little treat when he gets up. It's one less thing he has to do. He's been very busy with um, his acting and um, his music. He's an actor and a musician. So he's, he's very busy working all the time. And um, it would be good for him to do it. As I say now, I've made lots of potting up videos. So it doesn't really, you know, everyone sort of knows how to do this as such. But um, as I say, place the plant in the middle, a bit of soil at the bottom, and then literally just place the soil going around the pot to make sure that all the sides are covered and most importantly all the roots, the roots are covered too. And as I say, although this has got roots, this Sapelia, Sapelia is another one as well that um, it seems to sort of grow in the fall also, as a lot of the succulents we've got sort of do, and they don't like to be kept bone dry still it, at this sort of time of year. In fact, a lot of us Sapelias come into flower in the autumn. Um, but as I say, this is going to be recently potted up, so this is going to be kept dry for a week or two and then probably give it a little bit of a misting with a bit of rainwater just to let it settle into its pot and then we're going to let it sort of overwinter over the, um, over the winter months. Now, Hansi may put this one in his grow room because it's already got, already got a good root system on it, so it's just a case of overwintering this, this beautiful stapelia and we have all other stapelias in the grow room upstairs reason why we haven't got them in the polytunnel at the moment is again because they are not cold hardy. Stapelia, um, they need a minimum temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit because although they can sometimes survive a lot cooler temperatures like that if they're kept very dry because in Ireland where we live it is a damp climate it's better I think to bring them indoors as the cold temperatures and damp is not good for um, succulents and cacti that are not cold resistant so there you go let's put a little bit more and as i say a good little tip is just to tap it to make sure the soil's going all the way down all the way down the sides there and that's it so um again a little label isn't it gorgeous guys there you go christata monstrosi so uh thank you nelly unbelievable and then this one this is the one that nelly sent to me um personally as well just one for Linny and one for Hanzi so um isn't that just stunning guys what a beauty again roots are just a, just a better couple of inches of soil already in the pot and gently place in there and it's important that you really do gently not break any damage any roots when it comes to repotting again soil around the sides and again this is a um, euphorbia again so it's going to be kept inside the house um, in the windowsill with our other stapelia, uh, sorry, with our other euphorbias, and it's going to be um, kept at a warm temperature as well because, as I said earlier, euphorbias need a minimum of 10 C, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And I probably, when I get five minutes, guys, I will make a video on winter temperatures for your cacti succulents because it's so varied. And I'm always being asked, you know, what temperature do I need to keep my plant at you know cactus and my succulent and th there's so many different types of cacti and succulents and they all require different care um, in our polytunnel we keep a selection of cacti and succulents that need anything from minus something to, or can survive minus something to a minimum of five onwards so we keep our polytunnel about six to seven celsius but a minimum of five if it drops below five in the night the heater will kick on so it's completely frost free in there and we don't water any of the plants except for some of the slumbergia and the um rip salad of eastern christmas cacti obviously and some of the epiphyllums and even then when i say we water them we still keep them mostly dry just enough to stop them shriveling but all the desert cacti and the other succulents except for the aloes and the other winter growing succulents um, we also give a tiny bit of water to the rest we all keep dry so um, stay tuned for a video on the temperatures and things like that because I really want to help you help you guys out because it is very confusing if you're new to the hobby when it comes to this and it depends on so many things like where you're living in the world as well as <laughs> other things so um, this would help there you go uh, euphorbia mammillaris variegata and there you go guys four stunning beauties and um, Nelly thank you again for the most incredible generosity beautiful beautiful gifts ever i'm sure you agree guys and do go over and subscribe to beautiful nelly um, collection of unseen nature and links up above so guys thanks so much for watching i want to send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power as always, I'm across the Emerald Isle. And if you want to know more about growing cacti succulents, check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com.
Until the next video, bye!